more lights. That's what we are going for. Thermaltake came up with this massive 240mm RGB ready all-in-one water cooling loop. Here is our 240mm radiator with its pump attached to it. Our 120mm high pressure LED ready fan. And worth noting, those fans can move a lot of air. Here is our second fan. Our control hub, which will allow us to change the color and the speed of the fans at will. And the different back plates, so that we can accommodate LGA 2011, 1151 or even AMD builds. If this is your first all-in-one water cooling system installation, uh, it is good to know that the cooling mix is already trapped within our loop and factory sealed, meaning that this should be a hassle-free installation. Most of all-in-one loops are usually guaranteed to work for 5 years before any risk of leaks can occur, so this is relatively a safe choice. As usual, our kit comes with different sets of front and back plates and a bunch of screws. All right, our top front and back plates are for AMD motherboard builds only, so we are not going to use them on this particular build. These are the plate and brackets that we are going to use on our water block pump. Luckily, these are compatible for both LGA 1151 and LGA 2011 CPU sockets. To mount our backplate, we are first going to install some adhesive patches on it, and afterwards, we will adjust the screw adapters into an LGA 1151 position. pump bracket. A little bit of assembling will be necessary here. Make sure to have male and female adapters lined up and make sure that you align them in the right orientation as shown on the video. They will allow us to easily switch between LGA 1151 and uh, LGA 2011 socket. Facing the holes of your bracket, this is what you should be able to see. Three pyramids, which of the largest one should be based toward the inner circle of the bracket. And now just repeat the operation three times more. The plastic elements tend to be fragile and have a tendency to break, so just go slow and make sure that you are aligning them as per what you see on the screen. In the box, we will find different screws for different front plates. In red, the screws which will work on an LGA 2011 front plate, and in blue, the ones which will work on an LGA 1151 front plate. Hey! Time to assemble our screws to our water pump bracket. Simply follow the alignment as shown on the video. And no need to press too hard on the screw. A little bit of pressure will suffice to secure it into place. Alright, time to mount our bracket onto the water pump. 
first we are going to remove the protective plastic. And as much as possible, stay clear from the thermo compound which is already on the water pump's head. Alright, time to put the bracket in place. Make sure the indentation matches the water pump. Additionally, make sure that the head screws face the water tubes, meaning that when installing the water pump, they will be facing you and not the motherboard. Once your bracket is properly aligned, we are going to secure it in place with the help of a plastic ring. Again, go slow. A gentle pressure on its edges is more than enough to trigger the pressure locks. Time to physically install our water pump and we are going to start with its back plate. We are first going to remove the adhesive papers which protects our adhesive band from the back plate and then gently put it in place and ensure that the holes on the motherboard match the ones on our back plate. The next step will be the installation of our water pump. There should be no difficulty in this. Uh, simply make sure that your water pump aligns perfectly with the four holes marked in red on your screen. Uh, if that goes well, everything else should just follow. And now simply align the screws with the motherboard holes and gently screw them in. Again, no need to over tight them. Finger tight is quite enough. Alright, so usually I do prefer mounting the fans on the radiator before installing the water pump, but in this particular case, the manual advised me otherwise. Uh, I thought that there would be some reason to it, but there were none. So if I had to do it again, I would probably mount the fans on the radiator before anything else. Just keep this in mind, you can do both, but that's my personal advice. A little tip, when you are screwing in the long screws uh, to secure your fans onto the radiator, if you feel any kind of uninvited resistance, stop. You may be piercing the radiator itself and creating an unrepairable leak. So go slow, take your time and make sure this is done right. Additionally, when you're tightening the screws, remember that the fans chassis are made of plastic, meaning that if you over tight it, metal on plastic, your fan chassis will crack and maybe break. So go gentle. Okay, so one thing I realized uh, in the middle of the water pump installation is that this case is rather small and most probably the radiator will obstruct our way to plug in the CPU ATX plug as well as a CPU fan. Therefore, it is time to do some minor cable management right now. And as you can see, I am already putting in place the fan controller hub. We are simply going to plug it in into the PWM water pump plug on the motherboard. And now time to do the very same thing with our CPU ATX cable. It shouldn't take us too long and trust me when I say this will make our life easier. All right, finally, we are going to mount our radiator onto our case. And here, simply align your radiator screw holes with the screw rails on the roof of your case. 
And as usual, there is no need to over tight the whole shebang. Uh, finger tight is more than enough. Once done, simply put back the magnetic filter into place. Alright, we're almost there. The last thing we have to do here is to simply plug the last three plugs of our water loop. And first thing I'm going to do here is to pull our two fans cable on the other side of our case. And they will be directly connected to our power hub, which will provide both lighting and speed control for these fans. And the last cable is to power our water pump directly from the motherboard with a 5 volt plug. Last note for this episode, really do not worry about cable management now. You can leave it a mess if you want, uh, we will take care of this at the very end of our build.